second that we were going to have to cast Duck Hunt Dittos. Yeah, I would have taken the headset off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. It's too early scared. where we are. It's too early in the morning. Lyrics on less sleep than I am. Yes, <laughs> so very it's, true. I, I'm I would have, I would have like called these guys in Brazil real quick. Get that international numbers real quick. Maybe use WhatsApp. Be like, hey, don't do that. Relax. You're, Relax. you're not allowed. <laughs> let's Move let's everybody just simmer down right now honestly just from before we even start i saw both players getting a little bit hyped so you know what like i am so down for like a good old like match where they're just running in and speaking of running in is that guy doggo just gonna throw out the can just to have it on the battlefield and just immediately started going in once again with the up airs. This is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. I do think Duck Hunt does have the advantage in terms of the juggle potential on Palu, but Luki too just saying, hey, you know what? You're off stage. My down air is so super big. So you know what? Let me just try at least for that down air. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And you know, Duck Hunt players, you know, Sekai Dog is going to want to have a can out at any given time. And this is what I'm talking about. Duck Hunt's up air is actually a very, very good uh, juggling tool for trying to keep your opponent disadvantaged. So if the Palu doesn't know how to really mix up their options on the way down, which they're in winner's top 32, I imagine that they do. That's going to definitely uh, spell a hard time for Lukitu, but more than anything for them, it's going to be more so about just playing against this obstacle course right here. Going to have to retreat to the ledge right there with the perfect placement of the can this time around. It's all about that, for really, just all about positioning when it comes to being a Duck Hunt player. And if you're going to fight a Duck Hunt, it's all about navigating the obstacle course. Ooh, okay, going for the down smash, expecting Sekai to kind of fall right through the platform at that point. Unfortunately, could to you, unfor now going to drop the stock over there for it, going for the down smash instead of the up smash, which I would think is a better option here. No up air there either. I'm kind of used to the very, like, aggressive Palu, like, high stage play. But Luki 2, I like the way that they're also challenging the... Um, challenging with a lot of the reflect as well i mean it does make sense back oh. was definitely gonna take that stock they looked like they were in front of the doggo right there. I did not think that back throw was going to scoop. I mean, you know, Palu players love to like use that. Uh, they love to utilize that micro spacing by the ledge, stand on that one tiny little spot behind the ledge where they know they can just sneak behind the character for a back throw despite not being able to walk through opponents in this game. And as a result, we're already getting a lot of clean damage, 77% on the doggo right here. No fear on the part of Lukitu, who's been uh, utilizing his double jump off stage a lot just to try to keep the pressure on the doggo in the corner for sure. Neutral is reset set though in the favor of the dog once again though as the can is out i gotta say that guy doggo despite playing in a what is probably an uphill matchup right here they're doing a pretty good job at surviving did you see that can yeah the can was really great placement down there oh. is going to connect double dunk and lukitu got kind of the meteor tech there was ready to recover and i think it would have actually been able to recover back to ledge but it didn't even matter Sekai just ready with the dunk as well and now just on a complete rampage but of course sheriff shot is going to be reflected and then can is actually going to explode on that guy here beautiful beautiful stuff this look uh sekai doggo doing a great job at just the punish game as well we saw them like utilize a double up air and reversing the second one actually on the way back up just to try to catch lukitu's di to keep him at disadvantage for just a little bit longer putting every single projectile out once again making that battlefield that much harder to navigate on the part and utilizing the explosive flame to actually launch the can right back into doggo right there dying at some sort of crazy unholy percent right there utilizing that safe distance projectile. At least we know the matchup is uh, still on par with the favor of Lakitu right here, who's struggling to survive in the corner. Yeah, for sure. Definitely getting a little bit long in terms of the match time at this point, but the players are trying their best to approach each other. I mean, there are, oh my God, the fair into the can right there. Uh, not going to be able to connect all the way, but here comes can right back. You know, Luki 2 is looking for an opportunity to get a back air at this point. Going to pick up Sekai with the Nair, and it's even in Tunis. It could go either way at this point. The next edge guard obviously wins, but... I don't know. It's going to be big damage. Okay, going for the Nair instead of the up air, that had to have been a misinput. Uh, debatable. I mean, I'm not sure if up air would have killed from that low before, and I think maybe they just thought like Nair would have gotten them off the stage to get a ledge guard, but up there a little bit higher, you know up air is definitely going to kill from that time around. The duck just poking his head out. Hugh Neutron somewhere out there smiling watching this bracket all the way back home from Retroville. You know, he loves the ducks. But anyway, it's... This is going to be interesting to see because I feel like, what well, we mentioned before, I feel like Palutena, as long as they know how to play around the obstacle course, should be able to get around. But what we're seeing from Doggo right here is that they are not playing 
to their characters' weaknesses. They're playing around Duck Hunt's weaknesses. If there's anything that Palutena... Is there's anything that you need to know how to do against Palutena is that some characters, to punish her back air, which of course, as we all know, is invincible, sometimes up close in the CQC, you need to parry that. And Duck Hunt, even off of a parry, should not have the easiest time punishing that move, especially if the Palutena player knows how to drift away from him in time, even they're trying to get an F tilt to punish. So what is Doggo doing? Just what, you know, the Doggo does best and just focusing on their projectile game instead. And Lukitu, not in that first game, not able to play around it well enough. Yeah, it's for sure. Things were definitely kept close, and I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit longer than a 3-0 for this one, at least. Plenty of time to adapt. Did not catch where we're going in terms of stage choice. We're just going to go right back. Honestly, uh, Small Battlefield has now been regarded as, I guess, like everybody's second favorite stage right after PS2. But once again, going to come down with a lot of these falling up airs. Yeah, just kind of like PS2, just not as wide, I suppose. And the blast zones are just a little bit different as well. But, you know, still functions in sort of the same way. Palutena can continue those nair strings along the platform right there. Can shark under it decently well with up air as well. Ledge trapping is pretty much the same, though. It depends on what you feel like for the small pick, is that beautiful reflect right there is going to shoot the wild gunman right back at Doggo and put them back in the corner at disadvantage. And this is another thing that I feel like makes this matchup Palu favored on top of, you know, just Palutena having the high damage output that she does. Is that Duck Hunt is a very, you know, long range based character, pretty much a semi zoner, if not a full zoner type for sure. And Palutena, she's got auto reticle and explosive flame, like you mentioned earlier. It's just another batch of situations that you know that she doesn't really have to care for on top of having a reflector but the beautiful air dodge read on the part of doggo playing around any quote-unquote bad matchups that we're talking about is going to do it for them taking the lead once again in the set list so far lyric yeah it's very surprising because i feel like luki 2 is doing everything correctly this time but once again doggo just finds a way to connect can in but now you're on the palatina pain train you're going to eat at least 35 percent in this and even to get the get up attack right into the grab and the down air luki 2 looking really strong right now definitely has woken up a bit yeah, that's the kind of stuff I want to see from Luka 2 a lot more, is exploiting Duck Hunt off the level whenever you can. Like I mentioned before the set started, Duck Hunt is one of those characters that not only has no hitbox on their uppy, they also have no invincibility, Ooh. and SDs are not what I want to see instead, as Luka 2 is going to give up a clean lead right there, just air dodging off the level when they didn't mean to. Very, very unfortunate, but one of those things that you just gotta, like, say happened, happened, and just keep going in the moment. I still love how Luki 2 is at least chasing Sekai off the stage at this point, saying, you know what, like, yeah, I messed up that edge guard, but let me at least try and go for it again. Uh, Reflect is going to go out just a little bit early, so that gives Sekai some percentage on the board in their favor. But once again, you have to fight back. Your duck hunt at 109, a back air at the ledge can definitely KO at this point. Reflect on the sheriff shot, going for the dash attack at this point, and the mid air auto reticle or the explosive flame, excuse me, and we got game audio, we're chilling. Um, we're all the way back in this now and at a 1-1. One -one. We got game audio, we got pop-offs lyric. Did you see that man hitting his knee? I did. Did, did you see that? the knee. The knee slapper. Uh, woo. Uh, you, Dev, you know it's gonna be a good set when you got a knee slapper. That's beautiful stuff right there. Nice par on Lukitu. Really amping themselves up right now, saying this is Duck Hunt. I can do this, I can beat this character. Set guy Doggo. Just looking down, thinking about what he has to do in this game number three as we're going to go around. We are in top 32, ladies and gentlemen, which means we are in best of five territory. Taking it back down to Tri-State Stadium, ladies and gentlemen. Taking a page out of our book. This is our stage, as we like to call yeah, it. We don't sure. own it. We don't own it, actually. But, you, you know, it's it's a household name. We set, we set a standard. That's all we got to say. Two Tri-State yeah, commentators, of course, just gloating about our region. Very typical for us. But once again, very typical for South Sekai. Mike. Always able to get these up air chains happening at the same time at the start of each and every match. Luka 2 going to be able to find the Palutena Nair. Looking for the back air at that point. Not going to be able to connect on anything else. And now we're going to go back into the neutral here. Okay, F-Smash? 
Good, just really ballsy stuff to do in the neutral there with a duck hunt forward smash. That move is only consistent if you get a chance to hit with it up close, but as a long-range tool, it can be fairly decent as well. The wild gunman coming in clutch for his dog right there, just getting that shot to put Palo away, just not able to continue the string right there. PS2, a little bit wider this time around too. I understand this pick because it's going to give Duck Hunt that same bi-platform layout that they liked before, but a little bit more room to work around Palutena, which means as a result, you're going to see the Duck Hunt in disadvantage a lot less. You're going to see... Maybe not Luke Kitu just jumping into cans Ooh. before. As I say that, jumping into a second one this time around. Beautiful reversal on the part of Doggo right there. We got ourselves another stock lead on the part of the Puppo. Yeah, I'm very impressed by the reversal of the can at that moment because that made all of the difference. I also can say now that Sekai is going for a lot more reads, not just actively just going for the nair right after the forward throw, just really trying to follow where Luke Kitu is going. Honestly, Sekai playing so well right now. Can is going to bail Sekai out of a Palutena F-Tilt. But for how long? Now we're going to stick back once again into the Wild West of uh, projectiles at this point. And now Sekai really can just run around, wait for the opportunity to get their move started. But not if a Palutena dash attack comes right in. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why you never want to see Duck Hunt playing up close in like the CQC. You know what I mean? Like his Palutena just kind of got an invincible dash attack. It kind of doesn't care about Ken at all, as the clay shot is actually going to beat out the auto reticle right there. Very interesting interaction that we saw right there. But yeah, you know, we're definitely going to see that sort of longer range game, which you know Doggo is going to like to do. Not that Doggo doesn't have good damage and strings up close, but the double clay shot to the back air, as we're going to see a practice Duck Hunt combo for sure. But you know Duck Hunt has got to rely on their projectiles to be able to get that in the first place. And on a stage like Small Battlefield, that's going to be that much harder when you got to deal with invincible hitboxes like Palutena has here on Pokemon Stadium 2 lyric yeah lukey too though going to be able to find an up air and not much after it sakai definitely does not want to approach on safely at this point going to bait out the reflect there which has been working out for lukey too all game but it doesn't even seem to matter at this point it's really now what confirm can sakai get on the comeback it's going to be that up air 70 percent on the dog not looking too too shabby but lukey too going to be able to come right back to the palatine of uh f tilt no back air, great air dodge in by Sekai. Ooh, there it is. Good down. Mm -hmm. Good down throw back air to take the stock that time. And I gotta say, good Palo Bed and Butters. It was really good the way that Sekai took that stock before that he lost his uh, second one right there. Having that can right by the ledge and then just waiting out what Palutena's option was going to be. Really just sort of holding out for the reactions. Which is a really good thing right there. Just, just waiting to get that up air on the left side platform. Waiting for the teleport. It's definitely one thing that you gotta know if you're going to be a Duck Hunt player. You just gotta know what are your opponent's options to get around ledge dropping the can. Because it just lets you know, where do I have to put this hitbox? Because Duck Hunt got some pretty good kill hitboxes in the air. Up air, it's a really good move, not just for juggling, but that move is very strong, like, deceptively strong as well. So it'll kill at some pretty uh, wonky percents, 130 below the platform. Yeah, we're looking pretty even right now in terms of percent right now. Sekai going to be going into a Palutena back throw at this point, and now just has to come back to the ledge. But how are you going to do that when Palutena is covering every option? Going for the down tilt prop up there. Lucky 2 looking really strong. The Tomahawk is going to come out. And here we go. Back throws. Oh, wow. Great mashup by uh, Sekai here. Yeah, that seemed like the kind of situation after getting that many down throws in a row that uh, I figured Lukitu would have tried to condition Doggo a little bit. A lot of Palutenas, when they get that same down throw and they know that back air is not going to convert anymore, sometimes they like to try to, like, if they're going to bait out the air dodge read, the air dodge in, which is exactly what Doggo did right there, that's when they like to go for a forward smash or a down smash. But Lukitu really wanting to get this W, not going for any hard reads this time around, just playing it safe, eating a triple clay shot. Ooh, hesitating a little bit on the punish right there, not trying to go for a grab. Doggo just waiting on the ledge trap instead. That's actually smart considering how good Duck Hunt's ledge trapping is. It's looking a little terrifying as well, but the explosive flame just briefly going to chip Sekai and Luki 2 going to go up 2-1 in this set. But oh my god, just the like full hit of like the right side of explosive flame actually just going to take that all away from Sekai when he had Luki 2 right on the ledge. He had him right where he wanted. Can was out, uh, the Frisbee was also out as well. So it's unfortunate for Sekai, but Luki 2 going to be able to manage to maintain their composure and we're going on to game four. Someone called Lil John out here because we got shots, clay shots specifically. <laughs> 
out here. PS2 once again. Both these players really liking these biplats, which I don't blame them. You know, PS2, like I said, gives a lot of room for Doggo to run around, but Palutena's always like this platform layout because it's always given her such an easy excuse to be able to continue her strings, get good up-air tech chases on the platform, cover them occasionally with explosive flame. Palutena doesn't really have, like, too many bad stages. It's more so just, like, some bad matchups here and there that, you know, even some people think are still doable for her. But PS2 has just always been a good layout for her, so I'm not surprised to see this once again in game number four here. Yeah, definitely for sure. Back air gonna come out from Luffy 2, but going to eat the can, unfortunately. Here comes Sekai though, trying to find just more than the up air. Great carry on the back air, but still Luffy 2 able to get the re-grab off of it. Another grab there, going for the back air. So Sekai gonna throw out a can just for safekeeping at that point. Yeah, just sort of have that insurance stock out there right there. Just forcing them to hold shield right in the corner. Didn't want to roll to get closer to the gunman. Didn't want to drop shield because they didn't want to have the can to fall on them. They didn't want to drop shield and then run off the level right there because that just would have put them back in the ledge for uh, disadvantage state. Very beautiful positioning on the part of the Duck Hunt players, man. Honestly, they're like, they're pretty much like semi-Pac-Man players where they just have those big brain minds just for trapping, you know. But they got to work harder in a lot of aspects, even more than that character sometimes considering some of Duck Hunt's shortcomings, which... I I gotta say, Doggo, playing like there aren't too many right there, but it doesn't matter how good your character or how bad they are, it's not gonna beat an invincible dash attack. Right, here we go, Palutena Page Train coming out from Luki 2 at this point. And now, honestly, all Sekai needs maybe a dash attack, maybe a can hit. Palutena is rather light. Going for the down air, that's gonna completely misfire in the wrong way for Luki 2. But your Sekai is gonna be able to start the onslaught of percentage to try and bring us back to even. Good so far. Actually, the own uh, gunman interrupting the clay shot right there on the way back in. I think that's what happened, if I'm not mistaken. Try to utilize the uh, try to utilize the hit stun out of the end of that uh, trick shot right there to just double jump forward air. Try to keep Duck Hunt in disadvantage. Nothing doing, says uh, Sekai Doggo at this point, who is just trying everything to just get in on this Palutena. Who I gotta say, throughout this um, entire set so far, we have not seen them play as dominantly. Finally getting a stock lead as well as just like holding down the neutral solid lead. For the first time we've seen in this set. That's what I'm talking about, Lyric. Like, how do you deal with that as Duck Hunt? Man. I, skill issue? I don't know. <laughs> um, that, that, how how many go. explosive flames was that? Like three? I think that was God. three, and then the explosive uh, flame on the can was actually the one that did it. So here we go, though. Sekai, unfortunately, on their last stock of winners right now. Okay, F Smash not going to be able to connect there. So, Explosive Flame trying to take care of the can. These are great teleport cancels off the side and on the platforms for uh, Luki 2 here. They're working out in their favor really well. F Tilt going to shoot the can just right back. It's kind of a game of hot potato. Like, no, you take it, you take it. So, Luki 2 just trying to get away from the can, but great control by Sekai here. And once again, I feel like Sekai now has to play a lot more safely at this point. Just looking for another up air to take the stock. But now here comes Luki 2. They're just trying to find a way to get in, whether that be a back air or a nair. Beyond being just consistent with their safe options, I feel like Luka 2 throughout this set has just been slowly remembering how he has to play neutral against a character like Duck Hunt. They're playing around the traps just so much better this time around, not really dealing with them at all when they don't have to. Like, the can is right in the face of the dog right there. Why approach? I have the lead. I'm at 148% on my second stock. If I approach him there, I'm definitely going to lose the stock or at the very least get grabbed and yeeted off the level right there. I have explosive flame and auto reticle. Literally, why would I deal with that? I'll just keep like need I'll just keep like nickeling and diming it from far away until I can just get the can to explode, and all of a sudden, it's my neutral again. Yep, for sure. Luki two taking a quick second to kind of regain themselves off the side here, but the can explosion into the back air there, a little bit brutal. I feel like Luki two is now fearing the can a little bit more than they were before. Shot not going to be able to come out, but the forward throw into the can hit into the up air, but it doesn't work all the way. And in Tunis, this is looking a little bit more rough now for Luki 2 as they've now been lapped in percent. F Smash is going to connect. Can is out, going to fall there. Woo! F Smash won't even KO, but I could have sworn that one would. 
Just able to get the shield out somehow barely in time. Got the frames out just in time off of that ledge get up is Lukitu right there. Who's going to reset neutral again against Doggo. Who's actually taken the lead so far with that beautiful little duck hunt string that we have going on here. Hanging back a little bit more. Just dealing with the auto reticle. Slowly trying to make their way up slowly but surely. But the can trick shot was out just too long for uh, Sekai Doggo to be able to get that can close enough to the Palutena. And now the percentages are slowly getting more even. Utilizing Reflect to launch that right back at. This is where it's starting to get a little bit scary, Lyric, as the clay shot's going to be negated by the projectile again. Lukitu just doing yeah. such a great job at, like, forcing Doggo to just get a taste of their own medicine. Forward throw, but unfortunately not going to go into the can. Going to throw out the explosive flame to try and cover themselves to get back onto the ledge. But that is going to be Lukitu, unfortunately, SD. But fortunately for us, we're going to a game five. We are going to a game five. This is what you like to see as a spectator, my friend. Beyond the character diversity, you love to see these game fives. You love to see these players, like, fight their hardest, try harder, as this uh, mage stream is called, I believe. And these stressful situations, Palutena versus Duck Hunt. I'm very anxious to see what the final stage is going to be. I'm willing to guess that it's probably going to be Pokemon Stadium again, since both these players feel very, very comfortable with that. But we do see um, Lukitu taking his time with choosing his stage for this game number five. He was feeling himself like slowly but surely as this set has gone on, slowly but surely as we've uh, continued here. So we might wind up seeing something different, Lyric. I'm not too sure. Yeah, definitely taking all the time that they need right now to decide if they want to do something different. I do want to point out that Luki 2 definitely looked very uncomfortable versus Can at, you know, some points during this fourth match that we just saw. I felt like they were just kind of retreating away from it. And that's the problem with zoners is that the moment that you give them the opportunity to set up, they're now kind of in their comfort zone. We're going to go back to small battlefields, I feel like, which I think is a great stage. Once again, we've only seen this kind of bi-platform layout that we've been hanging out with, going with the Kingdom Hearts move uh, music to start this off, which I super agree with. I think the music in that game is fantastic, but we are going game five. Let's see how this one's going to play out. The same layout, the smaller um, actual size of the stage. I'm not talking about Blast Zones. I'm talking about the actual length of the stage. The Blast Zones might not matter too much for Doggo this time around. It's the beautiful parry off of that Nair to get that punish. My god, Lakitu is definitely feeling himself right now. I feel like... The I feel like Doggo's gonna have to just try to play the same game plan that they have to against Palutena here, just really always having the trick shot out, trying to create those traps, get those punishes and whatnot. But on a stage like this, it might just be that much harder to deal with the bigger and more invincible hitboxes of Palutena. Well, we're gonna have to see as it goes on. Oh my god, so you notice how Sekai actually threw out the camp but the explosive flame just kind of made quicker that explosion on it at this point but here comes sekai just trying to find their way back in palatina back are almost ko'ing at that percent and now once again luki too we saw this a little bit earlier no fear in going out there but unfortunately for sekai going to sd and you hate to see that especially in a game five yeah, almost bringing it back right here, though. Forward Smash just barely not doing it. What is the ledge trap? Just going to elect to retake neutral instead. Retake center stage, I should say. My mistake. Just going to keep Palutena off the level right here. Trying with a little F-tilt to try to keep them up in the air right there to secure their landing. Nothing doing, though. Lukitu finally able to make it back down. And now we see Doggo just starting to respect Lukitu a lot more than they were doing before. It might be out of fear. It might be out of respect. It might just be what they, need, they think they need to do in this matchup on this particular stage. Stage, but they still have not been able to take Lukitu's first stock just yet. Let's see how much insurance that Lukitu can get before having to sacrifice his first one. Ooh, 41%. Okay. okay. We've seen, we haven't seen up smash. We haven't seen the smash attacks actually come out from Sekai at all this set so far. So it's nice to see kind of a change in pace. Once again, going back into this kind of standoffish place where Nobody really wants to approach each other's projectiles here, so it's really just kind of waiting and seeing what the other person's going to do. Lukitu going to be able to pick up the Palutena Nair, but unfortunately for them, Sekai is going to be falling out, so it's all about the kind of follow-up at this point. Going to be able to find the dash attack, going for the down smash again. Another time that I feel like the up smash was the better option. Yeah, I agree, because like not only would up smash have reached right there, it would have been far less committal on top of that, and it would have just covered the bases a lot better. Because, like, what was what was that guy Doggo going to do? Like, what was the down smash covering there on the left side of that platform? Even if, like, they were able to land on the left side, I don't think 
on the left side of the right uh, small battlefield platform. I don't think the down smash would have hit there regardless. And you know Doggo's not going to retreat to the ledge in that situation. So definitely a little bit of a committal on the oh. part of Lakitu again, but going for the neutral air on the other side this time around. No need to tech since it's going that way. Doggo actually able to make it back this time around. Get up attack into the can to reverse the situation, but dash attack doesn't care, Lyric. Yeah, that was kind of funny. We've seen some very interesting, like, bounce-off projectiles or bounce-off moves into other things. So, forward throw is going to be the pick. But great control on the can. Unfortunately, it will not net them too much. Back throw is going to be the option. Not going to KO quite yet. There is a fair share amount of rage on Palutena. So that explosive flame is going to do it. And now Luki 2 primed right now to take this all the way into top 16. Can is just the biggest part of Duck Hunt's meta, whether it's for offensive or defensive purposes. And in that situation, we saw it for defense. I knew that the getup attack was coming on the ledge right there on the part of Doggo based on where the can was to try to launch it back. But Palutena, as that backer takes the stock, just doesn't care. She can just hang back and explosive flame that thing. Why ever approach the can when it's that close to uh, when it's that close to Sekai Doggo, who's essentially using it as a bit of a security blanket on the way back in to just ensure they don't get hit when you could just explosive flame on the way out. Yeah, for sure. Last stock, game five, looking super, super tense. And now, honestly, it's Sekai who's the one approaching right now. And the percentages are basically even again at this point. So Sekai just trying to find a way in. Unfortunately, Palutena with those cheeky hitboxes are going to make it a little bit harder. But Sekai just trying to land. Going to be able to land from the clay pigeon at that point. Into the up air. Can is out. What is Luffy 2 going to do about it? It's coming right for him. But Spot Touch still going to eat the sheriff shot Woo! instead. Reflex. He reflected the can and still ate the F smash for it. That is going to be a 3-2 for Sekai Doggo right over Luki 2. But my god, that was such a really smart like KO because you're once again reflecting the can, not the shot. That was awesome. Oh, the situational awareness. That was so oh, 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 good. I mean, we've only uh, casted about two sets so far. But that was definitely the best forward smash that we have seen all day so far. My goodness. I don't know if that...